Hey guys, so I'm going to be leading the Bible study for the next few weeks. Um, tonight's Bible study is just going to be kind of a ministry check-in, Bible study and tying into um, why it is we do what we do, who it is we share with, and how it is we share. And then next, starting next week, I will start a kind of lesson that will build off each other for a few more weeks. And so before we get into the Bible study um, tonight, I just wanted to thank my Lakeview friends and family for supporting me in the way you guys do, that this would not be possible without you guys. Um, and I hope my monthly newsletters help you guys feel a part of what it is I'm doing here in Florida and what is God is doing here in Florida, most importantly. Because I think it's so much bigger than even just me, but I thank you guys for allowing me to be a part of it and helping me be a part of it. Um, words cannot express um, the gratitude I have for that. And I, I hope you guys feel um, just as much a part of that as I am. And so let's get into the Bible study. Uh, so like I said, um, we're, we're first we're going to be looking at why. Why, it, why is it I should share the gospel? Why is it um, that I should um, do anything with my faith? Why, why is it I should do anything and not just believe inside myself? But why is it I should take that step um, and share it. And so what, what comes to mind for me is Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And it's the reason I do um, really all of this that I'm doing. This ministry is based, this is the foundation of my ministry and the why I do this. And so we know this is a great commission. So I'm going to read that to you guys, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always at the end of the age. And so, like I said, this is the Great Commission, what we know as the Great Commission. This is Jesus' final words before he goes and ascends into heaven and sit at the right hand of the Father. And so that always just magnifies this when I think about it from that lens. Um, these are Jesus' final words to the disciples. They have to be <laughs> of pretty great importance. Um, think of all the things he could have said, um, but he said this, he said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Um, and what I always encourage people in this, what I, and I want, what I want to encourage you guys in this is that, um, and even myself in this, that all nations starts with your next door neighbor, all nations starts with a person at the grocery store. All nations starts with a person at your job. You don't have to get on a plane and fly to some other country um, to go be a part of all nations. What all nations starts right where you are. Um, sure, it can expand and you can take the gospel across the world too, but it, it starts right where you are. In, what I've seen so much is that starting right where you are can have exponential impact and can and can spread. The gospel can spread like a wildfire where the disciples we make here in this country can spread to gospel movements across the world. And so that's what I want to encourage you guys in, as in why it is I should share the gospel if you're asking yourself that. Why, why is it that I should do um, these things. Why is that I should have an active faith? It's because she is right here. He's telling the disciples right before he goes into heaven to do this. He's telling us today to go out and do this. He's speaking to all of us. He's not speaking to only them. And so, and so also what I want to tie in here is the structure of this. Jesus begins this and ends this statement with him. What we do in, in the middle is up to us, but we have to remember it starts and ends with him. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And he ends it with, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So reminding ourselves sometimes when we get, when we get nervous, when, when we don't feel adequate enough, remember that it starts and ends with Jesus, that we are, we are to take this step of faith in the middle and do these things in the same way when Jesus calls Peter out of the boat to walk on water. If I was Peter, I wouldn't have believed that I could walk on water. Everything around me tells me I can't do this thing. 
but remember that this authority comes through him and that he is giving us this authority. And so um, remember that as we, as we um, go forth as to the why it is we do what we do. And so to, to kind of go along, I know this is kind of um, uh, um, against what I was saying earlier, but also I want to remind you guys that the nations today are living among us in, in, a way that they haven't in any time before. We're seeing some of the largest global migration that we have in the history of the world, not some of the largest global migration in the history of the world. The nations are living around us. And so, like I said, um, all nations starts with your next door neighbor. It literally does start with your next door neighbor, um, where in a story, I remember it was a few months back now that my friend from Egypt asked me to go play soccer um, with him and some other Egyptian friends. And I expected, you know, to maybe be five or six other guys there. Um, and I show up and it's like 20 Egyptian guys and one dude from Palestine um, that are, they're playing soccer, that are all speaking Arabic, that um, speak English on different levels, but they have no reason to speak English when they're together because they all speak Arabic. So they all understand each other. Um, and then there's me and I'm getting invited with them. And I always tell people, you could have told me that I was in the middle of Egypt and I would have no reason to not believe you. That everything around me told me I could have been in another country, but no, I'm sitting in Tampa, Temple, or Tampa Florida. Um, and it just goes to show you that the nations are living among us today. And I want that to be this encouragement into why we do this, that the Great Commission is easier than it has ever been before. Um, and so moving on, this is um, moving into the, the who it is we share, share with. And this is, as you can see, a longer passage of scripture. It's um, the woman at the well in John 4. And so I'll give you a second. You can turn to it. Pause me if you need to. Um, starting, starting in verse 7. It says, a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had been and gone away into, into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is say saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well is deep. Where, where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the, the well to drink from it, it himself. And did his sons and the livestock? Jesus said, and, and did his sons and, and his livestock. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will be come in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I can not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband for you have had five husbands and the one you have now is not your husband. What, have you, what you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you say that Jerusalem is a place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem <clears throat> will you worship the father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Mess the Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. And so, like I said before, we started with the why it is we do um, it is what we do, why it is we should share the gospel. Here it is, I think, as an example of who we should share the gospel with. And like I said before, um, 
in the Great Commission when it says to take the gospel to all nations. That's the who in that passage. And what we're going to see is these all tied together. Um, the, the why, who, how all tied together in all these passages. Um, and so we see, we see the who there is saying all nations. Um, and like I said, all nations is starting with your next door neighbor, regardless of nation, tribe, tongue, whatever. Um, it's starting with your next door neighbor. And so that's what I want to point out here is where we're seeing um, Jesus start um, with who is right next to him and doing something as daily as sitting at the well to get water. I think this is such like a minute task that Jesus is just like an everyday task that Jesus is sitting there um, and this woman is there. And not only that, but it, speaking to who it is, it is cross-cultural in the sense that she's like, she, he's a Jew and she's a Samaritan, that people at that time expected them to not even talk, that she's like, why, does, why are you even talking to me? Like, this is not, this is different. And I think that's what we see here is Jesus was different and we are called to be different. Um, and I think that's where Jesus is expressed out of us and how people see Jesus in us is that we are different from culture, that we are different. Um, and so we're seeing who it is Jesus shared with here, who was right next to him, that this woman at the well was where he started here. Um, and that we see that we see going on, what do we see going on after this story is that she goes and tells the whole um the whole village of what just happened. I think that's so powerful. And that's the important thing I want to want to get out here in the who is that it starts small. It starts with this one person. It starts with our next door neighbor, but this one person then goes, tells all their next door neighbors and they go tell all their next door neighbors. And that is the goal of the gospel increasing exponentially. So it, when it comes to who it is, it's starting with your next door neighbor. And so a story, a real life story I would like to tie into that would be, um, you know, I came here with a focus. I came here with a focus of Arab Islamic people. And, and so, you know, I, I started, I started like meeting, meeting different people that are kind of doing the same similar stuff, different people doing different ministries here. And I, I've been, to, I told them, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling. You know, I, I can't really like, like meet anyone <laughs> like uh, of this of, of these of um, like Arab people like I know where to meet them and I can go meet these older Arab men but then they're like like they have no reason to listen to me like it's it's, it's in this honor shame culture that um they're, they're coming out of it's very uh um age-based they give a lot of respect adult to being older um to the elderly that, that like the older you are the more respect I mean, that's who you listen to. And so me as a 24 year old dude that can't grow a beard, that's not married, that's coming in here, they're not going to listen to anything um, of like value. Like why, why, why they'll, they would ask themselves, why should I listen to this guy about spiritual things? And so um, I was struggling, struggling to like, like feel like I was making an impact and meet people. Um, and it was one of my now friends, Laurent. He's uh, uh, he was born in France. He met his wife while doing mission work in, I think, um, um, what is it in South South America, Argentina, and but now he lives here in Florida. And he's been doing. I've been working with him in a lot of different stuff now. But he introduced to me a Syrian family. He introduced them to me because there were a couple of guys that um, were twenty one and twenty two years old. Muhammad and Ahmed. And so this, this is how I like to tie what, what we would call um, in our Oikos map. It's the Greek word for um, like relationship network, like Oikos, like our family, our, our network. And so it starts, I, I always like to tie it to starting there. And so from Muhammad and Ahmed, I am sitting at their house one day, just talking, you know, having tea, doing normal stuff and the friend from across the street Muhammad comes over Muhammad is this Egyptian guy he 
Uh, oh, no. oh yes, he has same name, Muhammad, Syrian Muhammad and Egyptian Muhammad is how I refer to them now still. That's how they told me to refer to themselves. <laughs> um, and so he comes over, he speaks a little bit better English. So he's just translating um, for me and Syrian Muhammad. And we exchange numbers and we, we become friends. <laughs> and then I'm working out one day with uh, Syri or Egyptian Muhammad and we're at the gym and he starts talking to someone in Arabic and I'm like, oh, hey, and I, I introduce myself and this is now my Egyptian friend Tariq. And so it is from Tariq that he is the Egyptian friend that I talked about earlier that invited me to this, this to go play soccer with other, other this whole crew of Egyptian guys. And so it's just like, I just what I just want to show, share with you guys that start small and we build from this, we build our oikos from starting small. So the who, once again, I want to share, the who is right next to us, who we are running into that day, who is right next to us, who is God putting in front of us that day. And so the why is the great commission that Jesus has sent us out, that has been going on since the creation of the world, the missio day, mission of God has been going on long before us and will go on long after us until the resurrection until the coming of the second coming of Jesus Christ until he comes back. And so we are living in it now. And so that is the why we do what we do and the, who it is we share it with is who is right next to us in that moment, who is who we are running into at the grocery store, who it is we're working with, who it is that we live right next door to. Um, that is the who. And so, and now we move on to the how. And that the story I like to tie in here is Jesus and Legion when Jesus heals this demon-possessed man. And so this is in Mark 5, starting in verse 1, going through verse 20. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of Gerasenes. <laughs> and what Jesus, and when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs. He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not with chains, for he had been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart, the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And he saw that Saw, and when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him and crying out with a loud voice, he said, what have you to do with me? Jesus, son of the most high God, I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, come out of the man, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out to the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. And they begged him saying, send us to the pigs, let us enter them. So he gave them permission and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs. And the herd numbering about 2000 rushed down the steep bank and into the sea and drowned in the sea. The herdsmen fled and told the city and told it in the city and in the country. And people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon possessed man, the man who had the legion sitting there clothed and in his right mind. And, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon possessed man and to the pigs. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. And as he was getting onto the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. And he did not permit him, but he said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has, he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis, the Decapolis how much Jesus had had done for him and ever and everyone marveled. And so in this story, I want to share how it is we share the good news, how it is that we share the gospel. Um, and I think we see here 
first we see we see the power of Jesus. We see we see his power over spirits, over the um, um, over the things around us. So we see that he has power. And so, but really, what I want to um, focus in here on is that second part where what happens after Jesus heals those demons? What after? What happens after the miracle that Jesus does here? Um, one, first of all, we see that Jesus' miracles are seen by those around. And what do they do? They go and tell of what they just saw. And so in today's, in our, in our everyday going today, people are going to see, we are going to see miracles that Jesus do. And people are going to tell about it. And we are going to go and tell about it. Um, but we see here something, something weird happens where they were not a part of it, but they saw it from the outside. And when they told about it, it, people, people all came, but they were afraid. They asked Jesus to leave, that Jesus did this miracle, um, that he healed this demon-possessed man, something that we would think would be so awe-inspiring and good and cool, but, but they are afraid. And that, can, that stuff can happen today, that people can outside sources can see Jesus' miracles and they can go and change it and they can go and tell it. And people get, a, people get frightened and afraid by these good news and this, this good stuff that Jesus does. Um, so that's one. But two, what, what I want to point out here is that when this, this who Jesus had, did the, had done the miracle to in this story, when he tries to get on the boat and follow Jesus, what does Jesus tell him? He says, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. And I think that there's two things. One, it shows that like, Jesus is once again, this is, this is before what we later know as the Great Commission. Jesus has, was sending people out even before the Great Commission. And that's what I was talking about. This has been going on. The Great Commission is that final sending but jesus was sending people out even before that and we're seeing how powerful that is and two we're seeing the power of our own testimony what jesus has done in our lives because so jesus sends him and tells him who this miracle happened to to go and tell the people um these same people that were just frightened that were just frightened of jesus when they heard it from someone else and then we see next time that Jesus is in the Decropolis, that they're greeting him and that, that he's celebrated. And it, it would be, that goes to show us what this guy's testimony went and did, that he went and told them what Jesus had just done for him and that we see people come to faith and come to believe in Jesus from that. And that same thing can happen today, that we just go and tell people what Jesus has done for us sometimes it's as simple as that and that can spark a change in people's lives so I just want to encourage you in that in this in this how in a story in a story that this um really resonates for with me and it also ties into I think the Ethiopian eunuch later on where we see um Peter uh, when they're walking along and Peter is the Ethiopian Jewish reading like the Torah, um, reading the, the book of laws. And Peter's like, do you even know what you're reading? He's like, no, I need someone to explain it to me. Peter gets up there and he explains it to him. <laughs> and, but and then he tells him about Jesus and this, that, that this Messiah came and like, and he talks to him and he's like, well, yes, I believe it. That's great. Like, should I get baptized now? And he's like, there's water right there. Let's do it. And he does it. And then he goes. And this Ethiopian unit goes back on his way back to his people, where then we see, we know of this large exponential growth of the church in Ethiopia. And once again, we can believe it's from that, from starting from that one person. And so in that same way that she is sending us out in the Great Commission, he has been sending people out throughout the Gospels, throughout the New Testament. Um, and a story that I said that today, and I, I tie it both back to this and the Ethiopian eunuch is the Bible study that I started with my Sudanese friend um, who was an ex-Muslim believer that lived, was born in Sudan, but has lived in Egypt for the last 15 or so years. 
he is a little bit older than me. He's around 40 years old. Um, and he has a wife and two kids and she's expecting a third kid now. Um, and so how I have, I've told people I'm praying that he is the Ethiopian year, that he is the lesion to the Muslim believers in this community that I will, um, that he will come to, that I'm able to help strengthen his faith so that I can say, now you go and you share the gospel with those around you that, that, that you understand um, the way they think, the way they operate and where they're coming from better than I ever could. And that's what I tell people is my job is to work well enough so that I no longer need a job um, and then to move on. It's what, what so um, a lot of people into the um, missions and um, different thoughts like that. It's what we call mall. And so that's model, assist, watch, leave. And so that that's kind of the, the process that we go through things. And so in that same way that we are trying to raise up leaders to then send out and Jesus sent us because Jesus sent us out first in that great commission, going back to the why. And so this is how I think Jesus has modeled for us and that we even see modeled by the disciples later on um, the spread of the gospel to the ends of the earth. And so now, so let's run through this. So the why is the great commission. Jesus sending us out, Missio Dei, the mission of God. It's been going on since the beginning of time, since the creation. The, the who starts with who's right next to us. Who is in our circle? Who is in our Oikos map right now? And it will grow. And you will see, um, you'll see new relationships built from these people. But it starts with who is on our water well right now? That is the, the who and the how is to raise up leaders to then send out. Um, and so we can get into, we can, we can have long discussions into each of those and like go even more in depth. And I, I would love to, um, I would love to, and again, one day, um, but I think this is, this is a good starting point for going out and living out your faith. Um, and so I, I hope it, I hope it is beneficial. I hope, I hope you feel that this is something that you guys can put into practice in Oklahoma in the same way that I try and put this into practice here in Tampa, Florida. Um, and like I said, to begin this, like God is, God has given us a burden and the burden is the nations living among us. Um, and it, it, he's made it, he's made the great commission easier to fulfill than ever before. Um, and so that is my prayer for you guys. That is my prayer for myself. I hope that, um, that you guys feel a part of it, me doing it here, but not only that, but are able to put it into action where you are. And so um, over the next few weeks, we're going to go into um, church. And so I really want to dive into church in Acts, Acts 2, 36 through 47, the, the, the first church. I really want to dive into that because that is what um, I think it is I'm trying to do. Um, I'm trying to start church. And I think from church is where you see his disciples multiply. And it's through the church that we see the Great Commission um, come to fulfillment. So I want to look at that in depth for a few weeks um, to better understand like what it is that church should be and what it is healthy church is. And so um, I hope you guys enjoyed this week. I hope you guys enjoy the next few weeks. Um, I'll be in Oklahoma um, uh, next week. And so I uh, hope to see you guys and catch up with you guys as I always do. Um, please be praying for, I'll be speaking both at Oklahoma Christian and at a missions um, retreat for college students up in Pittsburgh, Kansas. That's what I'm coming to Oklahoma for. And so please be praying over that, that I might share um, beneficial information that I might share um, empowering information in the same way that I hope I did today. So thank you guys so much. And I hope to see you guys soon.